Okay, so we're on section six now, and we're gonna talk about flare-ups. Now, the first thing I always say about flare-ups is, it's a normal part of every health condition. So if you have asthma, epilepsy, diabetes, you'll have times when your symptoms are better controlled and times when they're less well controlled. And it's the same thing with pain. I think when you have an increase in pain, we often tend to worry and panic. And the first thing we say is, it's absolutely normal for this to happen. We talked about those thoughts um, in, in section four, and at that point it is looking at, okay, well I know I'm having a flare up, but rather than thinking the worst and I'm not gonna be able to cope, if you have a, a balanced thought saying, okay, well I know these things can happen, and I know there's, there's things I can do about it, should make it more manageable. Now the first thing we always look at when they have these flare ups is symptom management. Now this might be something as simple as medication that maybe you would normally take but you possibly haven't been recently. It might be that you've got extra medication to take when you do have a flare up and making sure that those are hand and readily available for you. We'll also look at other techniques that you could use such as relaxation because if you are in more pain and you're feeling more stressed and tense and tight, if you can do some relaxation, some mindfulness, that might be very helpful. Other things that uh, people have tried that have been useful for them, if for instance you banged yourself and that's why you've got an increase in pain, sometimes using cold, like a bag of frozen peas wrapped up in a damp tea towel. Other times if it's a muscle that's really, really sore, using like a hot water bottle. And there might be a bit of trial and error. Just make sure that it's not too hot or too cold. You don't want to burn your skin. Other things that other people have used, things like giving themselves a massage or getting somebody else to do it, or even a TENS machine. However, a lot of these things haven't got a lot of evidence behind them. But anecdotally, some people find that they are useful for them. Now, when you're having a flare-up, when your symptoms are worse, you'll find that activities that you would maybe normally do are a lot more difficult. So we talk about modifying those activities. We're not talking about stopping and being completely in bed, but relative rest. So instead of doing all the housework, you might just do a little bit of, what I say, pottering around the house. You might just do a couple of dishes and then maybe have a bit of a rest and then come back to doing something else. We don't be, want people to stiffen up when they're in a lot more pain and it's easy to stop doing exercise and activity but actually the stretches that you've been doing throughout the course are really really helpful to make sure that this doesn't continue on any longer than it should do so make sure that you're staying mobile it might be your own stretches but maintain those while while these symptoms are settling and normally they, they do settle within a few days sometimes it can, can take a bit longer it might be a few weeks as those symptoms start to settle, it's then when you want to start reintroducing your activities, but doing it in a very structured and paced way. You don't want to go from doing nothing one day to doing a massive job like emptying the garage the following day. It's fine to do some things like that, but slowly introduce it and keep an eye on your symptoms as you do so. As you start to reintroduce your normal activities, and that might be, for instance, if you've been off work for a few days, might be returning to work, make sure that it's not just your demands. It's easy to say, right, well, I, I need to go to the shops to get the food in, but equally it's important that you can do things that you enjoy, like contacting your friends and doing your hobbies. Make sure that you're doing all the right things to get a good night's sleep. You're not staying up too late, you're going to bed when you're tired, you've got a regular alarm time, because it's important that you get good sleep so that you have less symptoms. As you start to recover, it might be worth looking back to think, was there a reason why this happened? Was there something that was a trigger? Did I overdo it? Because if it was, that could be helpful for the future to identify, well, maybe next time, what could I do differently? And also reward yourself. It's easy to beat yourself up at the start, thinking, oh, what have I done here? Why am I like this? But we don't often say, actually, I've done really, really well to cope with these symptoms, and I've actually recovered a lot quicker now than I would have done in the future, in the past. The other thing then is to put a bit of a plan together. So a package that you've got, you might break down these things as a reminder so that if you do have a flare up again, you know how to best manage it. Okay, good luck with any flare ups that might happen further on in the future.